You're watching News Talk with Julia Cosby at Take TV. Ontario is aiming to have 65% of adults vaccinated with their first shot against COVID-19 by the end of May. By boosting the number of pharmacies with vaccines and sending mobile clinics to small employers in the GTA hot zones. Peel Region has announced all residents 18 and older in the area will be able to book their COVID-19 vaccine appointment beginning on Thursday, May 6th at 8 a.m. In Peel Region, nine areas in Brampton are among those with the highest COVID-19 percent positivity rates in Ontario. I'm joined with Conservative MPP Pramit Singh Sakaria from Brampton South Riding. He's Associate Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Reduction Minister without Portfolio. Thank you, Honourable Pramit Singh Sakaria, for joining me today at Tag TV. How do you feel upon hearing the news that Peel Region residents age 18 and older will be able to book their COVID-19 vaccine appointment beginning today? Well, I think it's great news. Uh, you know, this is something that uh, we've uh, been working towards uh, in terms of ensuring that uh, individuals in Peel, because we've been hit hard, uh, um, should be able to get their vaccines uh, uh, probably before others, uh, also because of uh, uh, many of the hotspots that exist in Peel Region. So we actually made the change, uh, you know, May 3rd to allow all um, uh, hotspots in the Peel Region. Uh, so probably about 60 to 65 percent of Peel Region was able to get vaccinated as of Monday. Now we've opened the entirety of the region uh, to allow for vaccinations. Uh, this is a great step forward and we're, we're hoping that uh, Ontario in general uh, can get the first dose of the uh, uh, their vaccines. 65% um, of uh, sorry, Ontario has got their first dose of the vaccine by the end of uh, May, which will be great. Ontario is aiming to have 65% of adults vaccinated by their first shot against COVID-19 by the end of May by boosting the number of pharmacies with vaccines and sending mobile clinics to small employers in the GTA hot zones. Do you see this as a big development by your government? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, it's building on, you know, we've always been limited by supply here in the province of Ontario. Had we had the supply, we could be getting into these hot zones, into these postal codes uh, uh, as quick as possible. And that's exactly what we want to be able to do. We're targeting hotspots. We've increased uh, uh, allocation to hotspots by over 50% for the month of May, uh, you know, being able to, you know, Chief Medical Officer of Health, uh, Dr. Lowe, even ensured that uh, we're going to have over 70% uh, potentially uh, vaccinated in Peel Region, just be, just given the fact that, you know, uh, we've all already administered 590,000 vaccines in Peel Region. We have 432,000 approximately vaccines that were uh, given to Peel Region in May. So, uh, you know, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel, and we're really looking forward to ensuring that uh, uh, people get vaccinated and that we can uh, get through this uh, third wave. You're also the Associate Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Reduction Minister without Portfolio. Ontario's small businesses are suffering in the hands of this deadly pandemic. How is your government responding to this crisis? Well, we know that uh, you know small businesses have endured a significant impact uh, during this very difficult time. Um, you know, we put forward multiple programs, uh, you know, the main stake of that being the Small Business Support Grant. Um, and this is a program that we have uh, initiated and we have put forward uh, where uh, over uh, $2.5 billion in direct payments have been paid to small businesses across uh, uh, the province. Uh, that's uh, over 107,000 uh, first uh, payments to small businesses have been processed, over 70,000 uh, payments for uh, businesses have been processed uh, as well in terms of automatic renewals. We have the 100% uh, of your energy costs and property tax being uh, 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 covered as well. The digital Main Street program is, uh, exists out there to help businesses pivot digitally, $2,500 grants. And then you also have uh, you know programs from the mm -hmm. federal government like the uh, wage subsidy of up to 75% and as well as the um, uh, programs around rent relief of up to 90%. So uh, there is a collective uh, measure of support to help small businesses because we know that they have been struggling quite a bit and we just want to make sure that they get the money into their bank accounts as quick as possible. In the wake of the COVID crisis, which measures are you taking in terms of red tape reduction? Yeah, one of the things that we've really been focused on here in, in the province uh, is ensuring that businesses are competitive, 
uh, and that, you know, uh, some of the measures that we take can help support businesses in their recovery, whether it's during the pandemic or after the pandemic. You know, a couple of uh, items that we've put forward uh, is, you know, uh, ensuring that uh, restaurants can deliver alcohol with their takeout orders. That was something that you couldn't do before. We're ensuring that regulations allow for 24-7 deliveries to pharmacies, uh, to uh, grocery stores, which, you know, uh, unfortunately before wasn't allowed, but we recognize that there is a significant need to get items into, into stores right now. Uh, we look at measures like reducing, uh, you know, the costs on restaurants by implementing uh, uh, caps on delivery fee service companies that are impacting small business uh, restaurants. So we're going to continue to work on ways to support businesses through regulatory modernization, uh, because we think that uh, that's the best way, uh, one of the best ways uh, to help uh, get out of uh, the way of the small business owners and just let them do what they do best, which is create jobs and, uh, uh, and create opportunities for hardworking families across the province. The Ontario Long-Term Care COVID-19 Commission report laid blame at the feet of the former Liberal government and Doug Ford's Progressive Conservatives, who were slow to respond in the early weeks of the pandemic. Today, Premier Ford told the legislator that he takes ultimate responsibility for the tragedies in the long-term care and promises to fix the system. How would your government fix it? Well, you know, we've, um, you know, my heart breaks for all the long-term care homes and, and the members that have lost their families in long-term care homes. Um, you know, we have spent significant money in, in the lead up, uh, uh, you know, and, and during this time to ensure that uh, long-term care homes are supported. But there, as the Premier said, we accept the responsibility um, and we're going to do better. Uh, you know, just here in Brampton alone, uh, we, and in the Peel region alone, we have introduced um, hundreds of new beds, you know, from 2011 to 2018, only 611 long-term care beds were built in the province of Ontario. Our government alone has put forward significant, significant investments to ensure that we increase, um, that we increase uh, the amount of spaces, increase the amount of buildings, uh, and increase uh, support for long-term care. And that's what we're going to continue to build on. We need more space. We need more beds. You know, the city of Brampton alone is going to receive over 400, 500 beds, uh, which had never received before. So that is uh, one part of the solution. And we're going to continue to work with, uh, with members in the long-term care uh, industry, our stakeholders, and ensure that uh, families are protected and our seniors who are the most vulnerable are protected as well. Under I understand that you've been busy with such initiatives such as extending the expiry dates of many licenses and permits and allowing restaurants and bars to extend their licensed areas, just to name a few. Currently, all stores can only sell essential items inside unless they're doing curbside pickup. I know that there has been much debate on what is considered essential or not. Who is determining this and why is key cutting, for example, deemed non-essential at every hardware store in Brampton, but skate sharpening is essential? Well, you know, we're, uh, the government has put forward uh, uh, emergency orders that are to be interpreted. Uh, uh, you know, we ask that businesses, when interpreting them, uh, do seek legal advice as well uh, when they're selling. But what we recognize as, you know, as we come across this third wave, we have significant challenges um, uh, with respect to, to not only hospital capacity, but our healthcare heroes are uh, doing everything and anything they can. So. We did need to take drastic measures um, across the province uh, to ensure that we kept everybody safe. Uh, we needed to ensure that, uh, uh, you know, the public health measures that were put in place restricted mobility because what we were seeing was not a lot of people that were staying at home. That's why we implemented the stay at home order. Uh, that is why we ensured that uh, essential items only could be sold. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, we are ensuring that, you know, people still have access to curbside delivery where certain products aren't available. Uh, please do order ahead. But we really want people leaving their houses only for essential purposes. And I think that is uh, something that's very necessary. Do you think that there's certain items that you should be taking a second look at? For example, when I mentioned key cutting, a lot of people are moving. Uh, the real estate market's very hot right now, and you can't really do curbside pickup with a key, for example. Is this something that you might give a second look to? You know, we're always uh, willing to look at uh, individual cases and, and, uh, and circumstances. 
Um, I will have to get back to you on that specifically yes. because, uh, as you said, there are some jurisdictions that might be, or, or you know, regions that might be enforcing it, might not be enforcing it. So, um, or you know, interpreting it differently. So it could be just an interpretation um, issue. But uh, you know, of course, one of the things that you know we've always uh, uh, done and really wanted to uh, push forward is on, you know, there is no playbook for a situation like uh, the one that we're in right now. And so, to the extent possible, we're going to continue to not only rely on the health and uh, advice of our health officials, but also look at different ways to ensure that um, uh, you know the measures that we take uh, are effective and, and where change needs to be made or where we need to ensure that uh, certain uh, issues are being taken into consideration, we will definitely take that, uh, take a look at that. Thank you very much. Uh, on to my next question. The opposition and the media are very quite critical of your government's handling of the COVID-19 crisis. How would you respond to them? Well, look, we're in unprecedented uh, territory right now. We see ourselves in a third wave. We've seen variants of concern that have ravaged Ontario, whether it's the variant out of the UK. Now we have, uh, you know, variants that are coming in through our borders uh, from other parts of the world, and we're asking for stronger, uh, stronger measures that are being put into place uh, to secure our borders. But, you know, when we look at uh, uh, the measures that we have put in place, we have one of the hardest and uh, longest lockdowns here in the province of Ontario. And we did that because we know it's necessary to protect uh, the people of Ontario. We need to. We know that uh, uh, you know we need to get people vaccinated. Right now, we have vaccinations uh, that are uh, you know happening at record levels. Yesterday, we did uh, administered 140,000 doses uh, of uh, the the COVID vaccine here in Ontario. That is a daily record. We want to continue to build on that. We know that by the end of the May, 65% uh, of the eligible population will have had a vaccination or a vaccine. So, you know, we're, we are making some great progress here. Uh, we have, uh, you know, shut down significant parts of the economy. We have offered support to small businesses. We have invested uh, into our healthcare system and we'll continue to do that to ensure that uh, we get through this uh, third wave and that we come out of this stronger than ever before. Now, I know when we look at places like the United States or some other provinces, um, they're not in lockdown. I know our cases are pretty high. Um, how, how would you compare how they're dealing with everything to how Ontario is dealing with everything? Because uh, I feel like we probably have some of the strongest restrictions in the whole country and perhaps in North America. Yeah, I know that's absolutely right. We do have some of the strongest measures in place. But one of the other biggest concerns, you know, the U.S. was able to procure and supply their vaccine much quicker uh, uh, to their population. Uh, you know, we have just uh, secured, we are just getting, now getting the supplier of our vaccine coming into our provinces. You know, we dealt with uncertain supply. Um, you know, in January, if you remember February, we had weeks yes. and weeks of canceled Pfizer deliveries that, you know, when we were supposed to be vaccinating uh, everybody, we didn't have that opportunity to do so. But now that, you know, we have finally been able to get um, vaccines into the province of Ontario, um, you know, we're seeing us uh, vaccinate at a much higher level. And, you know, a lot of this could have been avoided had those vaccines been here earlier. But, you know, we're going to continue to put forward uh, strong public health measures and also ensure that people continue to get vaccinated. So there is a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. We just need to ensure that we keep following the public health advice and that we uh, keep working together to ensure that we can get through this uh, uh, difficult period of time and, and enjoy a summer, hopefully, uh, in the next couple of weeks. Nine areas in Brampton are among those with the highest COVID-19% positivity rates. How worried are you about the riding and the whole city of Brampton? Well, we know that, uh, you know, Brampton is full of essential workers. Um, you know, that's why we started vaccinating essential workers uh, like at Maple Leaf Farms. Um, we um, Amazon, uh, we rolled out uh, uh, vaccination clinics there to ensure that, you know, and, and every, you know, starting Friday again, we're going to be rolling out vaccination clinics to, uh, to essential workplaces, not only in Peel, Toronto, York, uh, because we recognize how important these are not only to our economy, uh, but also ensuring that people get uh, the support they need, especially cities like Brampton, which, uh, you know, have been working throughout uh, almost all of this pandemic. So we're going to continue to do whatever we can to support cities like Brampton. Uh, you know, we're going to be building a new new hospital in the city of Brampton to ensure people get the uh, support they need, which is, you know, the city's been neglected for so long from a healthcare perspective. We're building a new 250-bed hospital with an ER room. We're building... Um, uh, significant investments in long-term care. 
uh, as we roll out vaccines into Brampton, you know, we're rolling them out into the Pfizer pilot uh, in vaccines is rolling out all across uh, the province, uh, uh, specifically in Brampton. We've got eight uh, pharmacies that are offering, sorry, seven pharmacies that are offering, sorry, seven pharmacies that are offering the Pfizer uh, vaccine here in the in the city of uh, Brampton, uh, well, alongside 64 others that are offering um, the AstraZeneca. So there's lots of uh, work being done, and and we know that hotspots are, are what need to be focused on, and that's why we put an additional 50 percent of our supply into the hot zones. And we're going to do everything and anything we can to support cities like Brampton. Are there any other ways that you're tackling uh, this pandemic in Brampton? Well, yeah, you know, the most important part about tackling the pandemic in Brampton, I think, is very much so on the terms of uh, increased vaccinations. Uh, now that we have 50 percent, almost every every postal code, as you mentioned, in Brampton is a hotspot. So we're receiving 50 percent uh, more uh, of the entire supply. So the 20 percent of the province's allocation is going to appeal. And of that allocation appeal, a significant portion of that is going to Brampton because every postal code in Brampton is a hotspot. So we need to continue to vaccinate. We need to continue to increase uh, testing at our hospitals, uh, at our, um, you know, ensuring that uh, essential workers are getting vaccinated. We're running through programs on that as well. Um, so uh, I think by targeting essential workplaces, um, as we mentioned, uh, you know, starting tomorrow again, uh, you know, mobile vaccine units in factories, in essential workplaces, that is also going to be a key part of our plan to get people vaccinated uh, and get back, get uh, cities like Brampton uh, back up and running again. Now, do you have any closing comments to the residents of your riding in Ontario to combat the ongoing pandemic? You know, in uh, in closing, what I really do want to stress is I just appreciate everybody that has sacrificed so much uh, during this time. Um, I really want to urge everyone uh, to get the first vaccine available, get out there, get your vaccines. Um, you know, it's about keeping our community safe. It's about keeping our families safe. Um, and it's so we can uh, get back to a sense of normalcy very soon and in a short period of time. So um, my, uh, you know, urge and request uh, to all residents is to ensure that they get vaccinated. Um, uh, is that, you know, they can go on the provincial website to book uh, any uh, age group over 18, uh, sorry, anybody over the age of 18, and uh, all of the Peel region, whether it's Caledon, Brampton, Mississauga, can now apply uh, to take an appointment. So, you know, we urge everybody to do that, and we really appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity uh, to continue to serve our residents and happy to continue fighting for our city at uh, Queen's Park. So thank you so much uh, for having me. Well, thank you so much, Honorable uh, MPP Sakaria. We really appreciate your time. I know it's very limited. Uh, thank you for joining me today on Tag TV. You are watching News Talk with Julia Cosby at the International News Channel of Tag TV today.